Greetings. I put together this short video to demonstrate my Fostex G24S 24 track 1 inch analog tape machine. The machine is fitted with the optional 8330 G series synchronizer card, which includes a MIDI interface allowing the tape machine to be remote controlled over MIDI, and an LTC timecode input which allows the G24S to be time synchronized either to another machine or as I currently use the G24S to a DAW system, in my case Cakewalk. The 1 inch G24S was introduced in the early 1990s and was the final analog multi-track machine to be manufactured by Fostex. It was also the most sophisticated and made 24 track recording a practical possibility for project and home studios, not only in terms of its purchase price compared to 2 inch machines, but also due to the inclusion of the Dolby S noise reduction system, which for all practical purposes eliminated tape hiss as a concern. A sister machine, the G16S, offered 16 tracks on half inch tape, but the G24S was the better purchase, not only offering more tracks, but also a wider tape width per track. Over the years, the G24S has had a great reputation for mechanical reliability but it has one Achilles heel, that being the use of surface mount electrolytic capacitors on the audio circuit cards. These were found to deteriorate badly over the years, so that even machines with very little use became unreliable as the capacitors began to fail. My machine had all of its audio card electrolytic capacitors replaced with normal leaded through types in 2016. At the same time, a full machine service was undertaken including the installation of brand new heads, so my machine should have plenty of years of service ahead of it. Extensive user documentation for the G24S and the 8330 SIM card can be downloaded from the Fostex International website, as can the G24S service manual, which includes full circuit diagrams and parts lists. In normal use, I have the G24S control panel detached, and remoted on a 5 meter extension cable. But for this demo, I popped the control panel back onto the front of the machine so you can see what's happening. And so you have an uninterrupted view, I'll control the machine from Cakewalk using the MIDI remote control interface. I have pre-recorded LTC timecode onto channel 24 of the machine so I can demonstrate its sync capabilities. So you'll see the timecode registering on the channel 24 level meter when the machine goes into play. I'll demonstrate four main aspects of the machine in this video, those being tape transport operation, level accuracy of the record replay chain using one kilohertz lineup tone, the sync capabilities of the machine, and the MIDI remote control possibilities. First up, tape transport. I'll set the machine to play, and then to spool fast forward. Let it build up some speed and then I'll switch it directly on to fast rewind so you'll see that the machine slows down and then goes into fast rewind let it build up some speed again and then I'll put it back into play. You'll see that the tape control is always smooth and responsive. Next, I will set Cakewalk to start playing from time reference three minutes in, and I'll switch on the uh, machine's chase mode. This allows the G24S to slave chase and then sync to a master machine, or in this case, to Cakewalk. As you can see, the G24S has fast spilled until it got close to the correct time code position, then it slowed down and entered into play mode, and then it syncs with Cakewalk as indicated by the locked LED going solid. I actually prefer to use the alternative lock on mode, which also slave locks the machine, but without the fast spooling. Why? Because I use Cakewalk as my master control system, and I can use the MIDI remote control to bring the G24S to the current Cakewalk time position without Cakewalk having to be in play mode. This is a lot more useful than most typical uses of an analog multi-track machine as part of a hybrid digital analog recording system. Okay, so I'm going to set Cakewalk back to time zero. 
and then I'm going to ask the tape machine to go to the same position using a MIDI command. That's it spooling back. And we'll go back to time zero and then it will stop. Just take a few seconds. There we go. Now if I put Cakewalk into play, you'll see that the G24S also enters into play and locks up in around five or six seconds. The machine itself gets up to speed from the play command in a fraction of a second. It's the synchronization which takes the extra time. Once locked, the G24S stays locked to beat accuracy. I'll return the machine to time zero for the next part of the demo. Next, I'll record one kilohertz lineup tone from Cakewalk via D to A converters into the G24S and then playback so you can see the accuracy of the machine's record replay chain. I'm just using Cakewalk as a convenient audio source. You could, of course, use any other accurate source of analog lineup tone. The G24S is capable of simultaneous recording on as many tracks as you want. So a live full band recording is entirely possible if you have enough gear to feed the machine with all of the audio feeds simultaneously. My own studio can set up to feed the G24S with up to 12 tracks at a time. So I'll demonstrate the record replay chain in two passes. First, I'll record tracks one to 12, and then I'll record tracks 13 through 23 in a second pass. By the way, the flashing uh, NR off LED indicates that track 24's Dolby noise reduction is turned off, but the other tracks noise reduction are still turned on. It's better to record and play back LTC timecode with the noise reduction off. Each track has its own safe ready button, which you would normally press to set that track to record. But again, so that you can uh, see the control panel at all times, I'll set the track arming using a MIDI command from Cakewalk. You'll be able to see tracks 1 through 12 safe ready LEDs flashing as I pop them on in Cakewalk. You'll see the corresponding arm LEDs come on on the machine. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and finally 12. OK, now those first 12 are in record ready. Um, yes, I could just put the Fostex into record and then start Cakewalk, but it's really convenient to have both systems in sync for this demo. So what I'll do instead is to simultaneously put Cakewalk into play and the G24S into record. And you'll see the audio level indications come up 10 seconds in on the first 12 level meters. And I'm going to record 10 seconds of tone so the tone will end at time index 20 seconds. Just coming up now. There we go. Next, I'll stop both Cakewalk and the G24S and locate the tape machine back to time zero. And once it's back at time zero, I will put it into play mode. And you'll see the machine locks up and recorded tone appears on tracks 1 to 12 at time index 10 seconds in just now. And then off again at time index 20 seconds. And as expected and importantly at the same lineup level as the recorded level showing the accuracy of the record replay chain. I'll just stop the machine again and I'll locate it back to time zero for the next part of the demo. OK, now I'll repeat the same process for tracks 13 to 23. You'll see I've already set the corresponding safe ready uh, arming on for those tracks. So next I'll put Cakewalk into play and the tape machine into record. And as before, the machine will lock up. And then it will record 10 seconds of tone on those additional tracks. That's the tone started recording there. That run for 10 seconds 
and that's it recorded. I'll stop both the machine and cakewalk. Locate the machine back to time zero. There we go. Now start the machine. And you will see that the tone will appear at time index 10 seconds at the correct lineup level as recorded, uh, which really proves the accuracy of the uh, record replay chain in these machines when they're properly aligned. So I'll just stop the machine again and return it to time index zero for the conclusion of this demo. I have calibrated the machine for RTW SM900 tape, which I consider gives the optimum balance between signal to noise and distortion. With clean tape heads and proper alignment, the frequency response is pretty flat from 50 Hz to 15 kHz, typically down about 1 dB at 20 kHz. There is a small low frequency hump around 100 Hz, which is common to all these machines and related to the head gap and tape speed. This is a feature of many analog multi-track tape machines and considered by many to be part of the sound. It's easy to dial out with a little EQ on your master mix bus if you prefer. With the really excellent Dolby S noise reduction system switched in circuit, there's really no need and no advantage to recording at excessive levels unless you want additional distortion as a musical effect. I feed my machine at a maximum level of 0 dBU which gives a THD distortion figure of around 1%. This drops to around 0.3% at more typical recording levels. The published THD distortion specification is better than 1% when recording at lineup level. The G24S has lots of other nice features, including vary pitch and slow speed audio cueing, all of which you can read about in the user manual. Finally, I should emphasize that you don't need to use either time code sync or MIDI remote control to record sessions with the machine. The five meter extension cable allows the machine's control panel to be conveniently located away from the machine and in front of you. You can happily record sessions without going anywhere near a computer or a DAW system. But the combination of LTC sync lock and extensive MIDI remote control capabilities opens up a lot of great possibilities for a hybrid digital analog setup. I consider my Fostex G24S to be one of the best around. It's been fully serviced with the completely essential recapping of the audio cards and has heads with very low usage. I hope you found this short video on the amazing Fostex G24S informative. Bye for now.